All right, first of all, I just want to thank you all for <coughs> inviting me out to come and preach. Special thank you to Brother Weeb and to Pastor Thompson. I uh, appreciate the hospitality. It's always uh, very nice to treat people very well. Uh, thank you for the lodging and everything. So uh, it's really, I'm really excited to be here. And, you know, honestly, you're coming in here. I don't know a whole lot about, about you all. I don't know a whole lot about your church. I was speaking with Pastor Thompson even just before the service tonight. I, I wanted to get, I haven't been able to follow along really closely with how everything's been going here. But just being here right now is just extremely exciting for me. I love, I love seeing the the churches getting started and and in and, and the early stages stages of development and, and seeing this group of people, which I haven't even had a chance to speak with all of you yet, but, but seeing, I can tell that there's a people here that have a zeal and a desire to serve God and you want to do things the right way. Amen. And, and my understanding with this church is that it started off with people who wanted to go soul winning and hold some Bible studies and be able to, uh, congregate together with like-minded believers and be able to just serve the Lord, right? And, that, and that's, hey, that's what it's all about, right? That's what we want to do as believers. And when people have that desire and that zeal to want to do that, that's awesome. You have something special here. And over the years, I guess um, you've been meeting together and, and doing holding Bible studies, but still trying to seek out that, you know, leadership and sponsorship and trying to get a church involved and a pastor involved to be able to help uh, really bring things together and continue to do th and do things under the proper authority as well. Yeah. And the Bible teaches that, and I'm glad to hear that this is a church and a group of people that care about that, Amen. that that really do care about things being done the right way. Amen. And unfortunately, you know, there's too many people in general just want to go rogue and kind of just do their own thing. But what, you know, when your heart is right with the Lord and you want to do things the right way, God will bless you for that. Amen. And this is a great weekend. I thank you again for the honor of being here to be able to help celebrate uh, even just a little bit with the, with the ordination of Brother Weeb uh, to becoming the full-time pastor of this church, which is awesome. And, and I'm super just excited and happy to hear about that. And what I'm going to teach on this evening, obviously, this is all just straight from the Bible, and some of it may be applicable, and some of it not as applicable to your specific situation, but the truth still stands. And what I want to do is I want to show you a lot of the similarities between um, what basically with, uh, with, with new leadership, even though Brother Weeb has kind of had a leadership position here for a long time anyways, with the, as being evangelist, and then becoming pastor, uh, the authority is changing from being under Pastor Thompson and, and, and that authority role now to being completely independent from Sure Foundation Baptist Church and Pastor Thompson and uh, go and what we see here to a is kind of a you know, life of, of, a, of a man of God who comes into his own and then ends up being you know ultimately replacing Moses's position right and there's a lot of great things we could learn through the early part, especially. And I'm not even going to go through like the book of Joshua, really. We're kind of going to end with the Old Testament in Joshua chapter 1. But we're going to look back at some of the early days of Joshua and see how that's very relevant with leaders, with the mission, with everything. And the title of my sermon this evening is, is New Leaders, Same Mission. Amen. Okay, it's not, not the best title. I'm not that great at title making, okay, I'm not that clever, but uh, I know Brother Weeb has been the on, the on the ground here meeting with you week after week, you know, so, so yes, he's still a leader, but um, like I said, the, that, that higher authority still exists and is relevant, is very relevant, very important because it is the, the biblical way of doing things and we'll end up, hopefully by the end of the sermon, you'll realize why that is so important. Um, but let's, we started here in Exodus chapter 17. Great story, of course. Uh, I, man, I love this story so much. But we're going to start looking here at verse number 8 with this battle with Amalek. Verse number 8, like, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as it said to him and fought 
with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And of course, we know, we see this when Moses holds up his, his hand, like starts to win this battle. But what I want to kind of draw your attention to is that, first of all, we're jumping into this with Joshua being a leader, right? We're not going through the whole life of Joshua. Joshua's already in a leadership role. Joshua's boots on the ground, and he's leading the charge. Now, Moses is the one that has the most authority amongst the children of Israel, right? He's at the top. But what we have here, he's... He's kind of removed from the group. He's up on top of the hill. Yeah, he said, I'm going to, you know, basically, he's working with God. He's praying to God. He, he's doing the spiritual thing. Well, Joshua's got his boots on the ground, leading the men into battle. And I think this of, you know, new church plants, and you've got leadership on the ground and the boots on the ground going out, hitting the streets, knocking on doors doing the day-to-day -day other leadership back, praying and guiding and giving direction from a little bit farther away. And uh, this is a great example of that. And ultimately we see then, of course, Joshua discomfits Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. So it's not like Joshua's not getting all these victories. It's like, of course, it's a great victory. Joshua's doing a great work even prior to the book of Joshua, where he literally is leading the children of Israel into the promised land and continuing to fight many, many more battles, right? This is still early on in his days, but he has already this leadership role that's extremely important, and he's following uh, this instruction under Moses. Now, turn, if you would, to Exodus chapter 24. Sometimes it's easy to, we kind of miss some of the, the, these uh, smaller details, but when, when Moses went to Mount Sinai, he communed with God. You remember, he had to wear the veil because his, his face shone so bright, and, and he was so close with God, and he's literally receiving the Ten Commandments from God in the, in the, in the stones. Well, Joshua was with him. Joshua was with Moses when he went up into that mount. The Bible says in verse number 12 of Exodus 24, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. So Moses, excuse me, Joshua was there as a servant, as a minister to serve uh, Moses. And ultimately, of course, that's what... The ministry is, that's what pastorship is, that's what leading is in the church environment, is ministry, it's service. Amen. And um, you have to learn how to be a good minister, you have to learn how to be a good servant before you could ever hope to become into a position of being in a leadership role within a church. Amen. That is that is of utmost importance. Turn if you want to Numbers chapter 14. While you're turning there, I'm going to grab my bottle of water, excuse me. Numbers chapter 14. It was kind of a, a very solid, a very to Joshua. And when it comes to anyone that's, that's going to be ordained into, into leadership, and especially the pastorship, because that's the, the, the highest role that we have in New Testament churches is being a pastor of a church. And I want to make sure, just for the benefit of this church, that everyone understands how, how important this is and the type of, of man that's being sought after to fill this role. You look at a man like Joshua, and this, this is relevant to, I think we can learn a lot from this. Look at verse number 6 of Numbers chapter 14. We're going to see a story here when the spies were sent out to spy out the land of Israel before they actually were going to cross over and begin their battles. They sent out spies to just get the, the lay of the land. And if you remember the story, of course, 10 of them came back and they had an evil report saying that like, oh man, there's giants and they've got walls and they've got chariots and stuff. And there's no way we could ever do this. Like, like this is crazy. We're just going to get slaughtered. And that's my paraphrase of it. And then of course you had Caleb and Joshua who said, no, no, we can do this, right? And what's important about this is we see Joshua's making this stand. 
a public stand when it's not popular. Because the popular opinion was with the group of people, with the 10 out of 12, right? The 10 that were saying, no, we need to go back into Egypt. And they're already starting to think of like, hey, let's, let's make a new leader among us and let's just go back into Egypt because it was better for us there, which they'd already been saying that kind of stuff in the, in the wilderness uh, anyways. But Joshua had the integrity to one, stand with Moses when times got tough. He was standing with the man of God, but even more importantly, he just stood with God and what was right, according to the Bible, according to the word of the Lord. Verse number six, the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. This is an awesome attribute of Joshua is willing to stand against public opinion, stand against the people who are literally trying to oppose them now and go back into Egypt. Joshua makes a stand, and, and what's most important is that, hey, don't rebel against the Lord. God promised us this land. God is with God. You think God is with the heathen? God's not with the people of the land. God's with us. Amen. Amen. So you need to not fear the people of the land. It may look like they have all these defenses. It's a facade. Because if God is for us, who could be against us? Amen. They could have all these built-up walls. They could have all this, you know, their weapons of war or whatever. It doesn't matter because God's not going to make it prosper for them if he's with us. Right. He says, they're bread for us. <laughs> they're they're going to provide us our sustenance. They're not going to hurt us. Have faith in the Lord. Of course, we know how that, how that ultimately goes down. They don't end up going into uh, the promised land at that time. They end up wandering in, in the wilderness for 40 years. But Joshua had that heart. And look, and Joshua stuck with it too. Because had they been able to go over and been victorious, that's great. That would have been easier than having to wait around for 40 years. Now, y'all been gathering together, a group of people, wanting to have just you know a church, officially church, going here for a while before you even had that, right? How long, about approximately, how many years were y'all meeting up together? About six years. Six years. Six years. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's a long time to be gathering and meeting and not actually having the promised land like you want, you know, but you're still staying with it. You're not losing faith. You're not losing sight. You're, you know, it's not always easy. It's not exactly what you thought might happen. It's, you know, you're, you're, but you stay with it and stay faithful. And then you end up being blessed. And, and you need to have people who can have that, to can stand up and have that resilience and have that boldness and have that courage and be able to continue and stay steadfast to be able to, to bring everybody together so that it doesn't, things don't just fall apart and everyone just kind of goes off and then just becomes some lame Christian that's not really doing anything with their life. But you see the importance of gathering together and saying, nope, we're going to remain doing this, we're going to stay steadfast, and we're going to do things the right way. Turn, if you would, to Numbers chapter 27. Numbers 27, Moses has been informed that he's, he's not going to lead the people into the promised land. That he is going to, his life is going to end and, and he will not be the one leading them over. And Moses had this great heart for the people and was worried about the people as he always had been. And, and his character has demonstrated throughout his entire life how much he actually just cared about the people. That's why he's... He was the most meek man on the earth. Even when they hated him, he still loved them. Amen. Even when they wanted to kill him and go back and do their own thing, he still loved them. He still interceded for them. He still wanted what was best for the people. And even now when he's finding out, you know, hey, you're not going to be the one to lead them over. 
you know, there was this sin that, that God was not happy about. And he's saying, because of that, now you're not going to be able to lead the children of Israel. You're not going to get into the promised land. But Moses cares. In verse 15, it says, And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And of course, this phrase even appears in the, in the Bible multiple times, sheep having no shepherd, right? There's, there's nothing wrong. That, of course, we have the word sheeple, and, and it's not a good thing to be called a sheep nowadays, right? And, and in general, I, I get it. I understand. You don't want to be just some blind person like the blind following the blind. Right? You don't want to just accept everything you hear no matter what and not be critical thinking and stuff like that. Of course, that is not a good thing. But when the Bible talks about being a sheep, we ought to be sheep when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to receiving the things of the Word of God. Hey, we, he's the great shepherd, and we are sheep, and we ought to be following that shepherd and, and following that leader to, to guide us in the right way. Okay, and that is what an under shepherd does. That is what a bishop does in a New Testament church mm -hmm. is to try to be a leader and watch over the flock and watch over the people. That is that is literally part of the job of a bishop, which is why the words even used in Scripture of being a bishop, which is synonymous with being a pastor or being an elder. <laughs> it is to be able to look out for and care for the flock, which is exactly what Moses is doing. He's saying, look. If I'm going to be gone, there needs to be someone in my place that's going to care for the people and look out for them. Right. Verse number 18, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. So Joshua already has got the Spirit. He's already a Spirit-filled man. He's already someone doing great work. We can see this in his life. He's already taken stands. He already knows he has integrity. He's been ministering. He's been serving. He's proven himself. God now is saying, you know what? Joshua is going to be the man. And don't let the, we're going to get into this more near the end of the sermon, but just pay attention. It says, and lay thine hand upon him. We're going to get into a little bit the laying out of hands because that is a very important aspect of doing things biblically and doing things right, which is why you shouldn't just have a bunch of rogue people going off and doing their own thing. Amen. It needs to be done biblically and scripturally, and you will be blessed for that. And this church, I believe, is being blessed already for following things the way that they ought to be done decently and in order. Amen. It says in verse number 19, and priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. This is Joshua's ordination. An ordination is when you're being ordained or chosen or selected to do a job. And in this job, he's being selected to, to he's given a charge, he's given a directive, he's given Command, say, here, here is what you are going to do. Verse number 20, And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And this is done so that the people know, hey, Moses has been in charge. And clearly Moses is putting his stamp of approval on this man, on Joshua, as being the next leader, so that he could say, hey, the way that you followed me, now you need to follow this man. The respect you had for me, the honor you've given me, you have to give this man that honor now. Amen. He's filling this role. He's filling this position. He's the leader. You need to treat him as such. Right. He's been chosen, not just, most importantly, of God. This is, this is who God wants to lead. The Bible says in... Verse 21, and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. This is all done with seeking the Lord's wisdom first, doing things the right way, getting the priest involved, right? And it says, at his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation, and he laid his hands upon him again, just notice that, and gave him a charge 
as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Now, flip over to Deuteronomy chapter 31. We're actually going to see the charge that was given to Joshua in Deuteronomy chapter 31. It says he gave him a charge. Let, let's see specifically what that charge is. Deuteronomy chapter number 31. And starting in verse number 7, the Bible reads, And Moses called on Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Now I want you to just pay, make note of this as well. That phrase, be strong and of a good courage, and especially Brother Weeb, pay attention to this, because this is, this is part of the charge that comes up, and this phrase is repeated over and over and over and over again. And for someone being ordained, and for someone taking on this position, you know it's important? That you're strong and you're of a good courage. Amen. Because the ministry is not easy. Right. Yeah, there's going to be some times where it's great. Things are, you're, you're sailing fine. Things are going really well. Everything's roses. It's, you know, man, everything's just going great. There's no opposition. But the tough times are ahead. They're coming. Okay? There's going to come the time where you need to be strong. You need to be tough. You need to be able to resist the opposition and be able to make the hard stands like Joshua had already proven he could do when it wasn't popular to make the stand. And when you do make the public stand and not just keep it to yourself, right? right? Yeah. Joshua did, what didn't just be like, well, we could, you know, we could, God could get us in there. <laughs> God, God, God can do it. And just kind of keep that back to himself. No, he, he stood up and spoke up and said, no, look, you guys got it wrong. God is for us. He's going to give us this land. Just don't rebel against it. Like he right. stood up and publicly rebuked him and said, this is right. You need to have that in a leader when you're ordained someone, you have someone in charge. Hey, be strong and have a good courage. For thou must go with this people. This is Moses now talking unto Joshua. Look at verse number eight. He it is that doth go before thee. And this is, this is courage because God's with you. It doesn't have to be all on your own. Right. And when you're right and you keep on seeking the Lord, you have all the more reason to be bold and to be strong and to have courage because you can know, you got the confidence knowing God is with me. Amen. God is with us. The Lord, he it is that though before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Amen. During the hard times, don't fear, don't be discouraged, don't be dismayed, don't worry about what people can do to you when they say mean things to you, when they threaten you, when they try to get you shut down, when they try to get you kicked out, they try to get me deported, you know, whatever. <laughs> don't be afraid of what man can do unto you. Right need to be strong and of a good courage. Verse number 9, And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. And look at, just a side note, verse number 12, gather the people together, men, women, children, the stranger, and what are they doing? They're going through the whole law, like the whole Bible. They're reading all of the word of God. With everyone gathered together, they don't have the kids over here and right. this other group of people over there and, you know, they're all together. And, and the sentence doesn't end in verse 12, if we keep reading verse 13, and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear. That's why you want to have the children in the reading of the word of God, in the Praise teaching God. of the word of God. Amen. 
Because they might not be getting it at home. They might not be, I mean, hey, would to God every child would hear the word of God and have it expounded unto them and have them learn and taught at home. That is the responsibility of the parents. Right. But you know what? Maybe that's not happening. We better make sure it's happening with the congregation. Amen. Over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. And remember I was talking about we turned here because we're going to see the charge that God has for Joshua. And Moses, Joshua went to present himself in the tabernacle of the congregation. And he talks to Moses first and, and, and discusses things with him. Jump down to verse number 23, though. Look at the charge. Verse 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, said what? Be strong and of a good courage. Isn't that exactly what Moses said? That's identical. Like, word for word, that's what Moses said. Be strong and of a good courage. So there's something that Moses definitely learned from the Lord and was able to pass that down to Joshua. His best advice, his charge to Joshua, is the exact same charge that the Lord has for Joshua. Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. So Moses told Joshua first, and now God's telling Joshua, hey, be strong and of good courage, and I'm going to be with you. No reason to doubt, right? Jump down to verse number, uh, excuse me, flip over real quick a few pages to Deuteronomy 34. One more point. As, as we're building up kind of t- near the, to, to the end, where I'm going to just, just hopefully just, just make everything as clear as possible. Look at verse number 9 in chapter 34. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And that phrase, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, is a very important phrase. It's in there for a reason. It's not just that Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. Amen. So keep that in mind. The laying on of hands, and, I'll, and I'll, like I said, I'll go a little bit deeper when we wrap things up. But that is, that is important. Part of the ordination process is part of having someone leading the church. It is important. Uh, turn go to Joshua chapter number one. And, and Deuteronomy records that verse we were just in, that the children of Israel did listen to him. They hearkened unto him. They did respect Joshua. They did listen to him as they listened to Moses. But we're going to see even the people themselves confirm that their heart is with him. Joshua chapter 1, when Joshua commanded the officers of the people. Look at verse number 16 of Joshua chapter 1. The Bible reads, And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest, we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. And, you know, this is how church members, how we as church members ought to be following our leaders. Right. Right? Just like the Apostle Paul said, hey, follow me even as I follow Christ. And, and I get sick of, of hearing people say, oh, I'm not going to go to church. What do you think? I have to listen to some man tell me what's in about? Yeah, you do. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yes, because that's the way that God designed it. Because God had people ordained to be in charge and to run things and to teach and to lead. And that, yeah, you ought to be listening to those people. Amen. You ought to be hearing them. And just like they said here, hey, look, we listen to Moses. And just as we listen to Moses, we're going to listen to you. And he's probably thinking like, oh, great, the same way you listen to Moses. Because they didn't always listen to Moses very well, right? They're, they're thinking like, oh, man. But they did. ultimately they did, right? They, Moses got them, and again, side of a good leader, right? With, with probably some of the worst group of people. He still kept them from being destroyed. He kept them from being annihilated and, right. and, and going back to Egypt. He did keep them going in the right direction. And it took everything for Moses to do that. It, it drained him, but he was able to do that. And now we see Joshua stepping up, 
And because he served, because he was faithful, because he had the spirit, because he met these qualifications, he was ordained, he was chosen, he had hands laid on him, and now the people are going, you know what? According as we hearken unto Moses and all things, so will we hearken unto thee. But then they said, only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. So we need to follow the man of God as long as he's following God, as long as he's doing what's right, as long as God is with them, right. I mean, we want to listen to him. Now, if some pastor goes off and gets into sin and gets into you know, all kinds of wickedness and perversion and just starts going their own way and, and not doing what's right and they're not right with God, at that point, then you say, okay, well, I'm not going to follow you. You start going down a different path, then you, you were not required, we're not obligated to follow that person then. But you know what we need to do? Find someone we can follow. <laughs> find, find somewhere we can go we can follow people. And follow a man of God. Follow someone who has been commissioned to do the job. Commissioned to lead. And has the Spirit of God on them. Look at verse 18. Again, this is the people. This is, these are the people answering, the, the officers answering. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Now, I'm not saying that you adopt this rule here. <laughs> <laughs> but we can see where their heart was, right? They're saying, look, we're, you know, this is so serious. We're, we're going to follow you and we're not going to tolerate rebellion. But then look at, the, look at that last phrase, though. Only what? Be strong and of a good courage. Amen. So you've got Moses instructing to be strong and of a good courage. God instructing be strong and of a good courage. And you know what? You've got the people instructing, hey, be strong and of a good courage. Everyone wants that leader to be strong. Amen. The people, God, the ordaining authority, and everyone wants that, people to, wants that person, the leader, to have good courage. It's important. It's critical. You've got to maintain that. Amen. And people, encourage your leader. Encourage your pastor right. to maintain and be strong. Because when you're under attack and under attack and under attack, it's not always easy to be strong. That's why we're being commanded to be strong, right? And, and you know what can help? When people encourage, when people edify, when people communicate and say, Hey, I love you, Pastor. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Keep it. Just something so small is enough to encourage and to strengthen and to edify. Edify means you're building up. You're strengthening. right? If you want your leader, if you want your pastor to be strong and of a good courage, edify him. Strengthen him. Jump up to verse number five here. We're going to see the charge of the Lord again. And it's in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. This is the message from God to Joshua. Excuse me. Be strong and of a good courage. Again. Boy, how many times are we going to read that phrase? These are all different verses. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I have seven. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Amen. Now, if you don't leave with anything else tonight, <laughs> please leave with being strong and courageous. <laughs> I don't know. But, but here's the thing. When it comes to the Bible, it comes to the Word of God, to repeat it over and over again, you know what that means? It's important. Right, right. Yeah. And the more we see stuff repeated, the more times God's going to use the limited space in his word to, to give you a message, pay extra attention the more times you see that. Right. Because it's that important. Verse 7, we'll keep reading. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. You have to be strong and courageous to do according to all of the law. Because there's always going to be times when some of the law is not popular. Yeah. There's always times when obeying all of God's commands, that's not going to go well. Amen. So you need to be strong and courageous to say, no, no, no. We believe in all of the law. Amen. 
It's all the Word of God. I believe in the whole Bible. Amen. Old Testament and New Testament. We believe it all. It's the Word of God. Right. And, yeah, some things are popular. Some things are in season, and some things are definitely out of season. Right. And you know what? That all changes with the times. Yeah. And there's never been a time where everything has been perfect in history. There's always been things that have been despised in God's law. It's just different things at different times. I mean, even you know, going back to the 50s, it's not some, some heyday where everything was right with, with the world in America or something, or it, you know, like with just culture in general. Like people always want to talk about that. Hey, yeah, it may have been better with in, in, in some areas, but it wasn't best in all areas. Bottom line is, you need to be strong according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Don't compromise. Don't, don't, don't start shifting over to the side that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So this is, this is continuing the, the charge, right, that's given to Joshua. That he needs to be strong and courageous. Keep the, all the law of God. Don't turn away from it. Don't turn to the left hand. Don't turn to the right hand. Why? So that you can prosper. You want to prosper as a church? Don't deviate from the word of God. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. The only way you're going to ensure and make sure that you can do what's written in the Word of God, and that you can keep the law of the Lord, is if you know it. Amen. You have to know it. And knowing it isn't, well, I read the Bible once. Yeah, I read it. I even read it cover to cover. <laughs> How well can you really know the Bible? Not that well at all. Which is why he's being instructed, look, you can't let this go out of, like, like cease from coming out of your mouth. Like, you've got to be, you've got to be, have it in your mind and in your heart so that you're talking about it, you're thinking about it, you're meditating about it day and night and just and, and pondering and questioning and thinking and going, oh man, I read this and this, what does this mean? How does this apply? What is right? God lead me in the truth, but that you can be thinking about it regularly. Day and night, that's, that's at least twice a day. You want to be a good leader, that, that is a requirement right there. And that, or if you, at least you want this, look at, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Right. You want to be successful? You want to have a successful leader in this church? You want to have a successful church in general? We need to have leaders that are going to be receiving the charge and taking the charge like Joshua receiving the charge from the Lord. And look at verse number nine. Have not I commanded thee, what's that next phrase? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. It's encouraging. Be strong, be courageous. Turn, last place I'm going to be turned. 1 Timothy chapter 4. There's a lot that we can learn from, and there's a lot more we can learn from the life of Joshua. But it just, to me, it just, it's just so interesting how, how the leadership of Joshua, how he rose and, and, and ended up in this position of being ordained to be leading the, the, the children of God, the children of Israel into the promised land, and kind of taking on the torch and going into that next phase of their existence. And look, it was, um, Moses was a great man of God, but when Moses is gone, guess what? Joshua was a great man of God. They both had their battles. They both followed the Lord, and great things happened as a result from both of them serving. And you're going to have different leaders, and they're going to have different styles, and they might do some different things. But our hearts right, no matter who that ordained leadership is, as long as, hey, if they're following the Lord, that's... That's it. That's all you need. Let's not be the carnal Christians like the church of Corinth that wanted to 
start these little factions of, oh, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Cephas, and I'm of, you know, and, and kind of being divided because they had their favorite preacher. Amen. And they had, you know, ah, man, I, well, I don't like this guy, but I like this guy, but, you know, like, so what? You're in a church, you're in a local church here, get behind your guy. That's right, amen. <laughs> That's what you need to do. Amen. And I'm not saying you can't learn from other people, amen. Learn from people that, that are teaching the word of God, great. You know what? Get behind the ordained leadership in your local church. Amen. <laughs> 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse number 11 this is the charge of Timothy again this is New Testament to a preacher to a, a pastor uh, from the Apostle Paul to Timothy verse number 11 these things command and teach let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity it's a lot of responsibility to leadership. Hey, you need to be an example in all these areas. You need to you need to make sure that you've got it stepped up and you are leading by example and showing, hey, this is how we do things. Till I come, give attendance to reading. So make sure you're reading the Bible. To exhortation. To doctrine. You need to be teaching you need to be reading the bible so you know just like joshua had to hey you'd be meditating there in day and night exhorting because the people need exhortation people need to be encouraged people need to be uh, uh lifted up and to doctrine and that's going to come from all your reading making sure you've got things right according to the bible because we care about god's word Amen. you know we care about god's word more than what anyone will say and as this church becomes independent too, hey, you know, the responsibility of the church is going to be to Christ right. and Christ alone. And that's, that goes for all independent churches that want to follow Christ. The, the Bible has to be followed as they see it, as it's, as it's shown to them and revealed unto them, no matter who agrees with it or disagrees with it, right? And the church is going to have to decide, you know, obviously um, you already know what everyone believes on all the fundamentals. We're not talking about making a big stink over some smaller point or some other uh, not quite as important doctrine. But at the end of the day, though, the man of God is, is responsible to the Lord. And has to be courageous and has to be able to stand strong to preach as they see it. Because if you're not, anything that you don't do of faith is sin, the Bible teaches. And if you believe a certain way and you're, you know, like, but you teach different just because you don't want to be called out or, you know, like, that's not right. Yeah. Can't do that. You have to stay true and faithful to the Lord and to his word. I just really wanted to, to, to look at here. With all of the other references we saw of laying out of hands, look at verse number 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. There is a gift that's given through the laying on of hands. And I can't fully explain it to you. It's hard to articulate how it works. It's a spiritual thing. But what I can do is I can share my own testimony with you that... While I was in training, while I was being taught, while I was serving, while I was ministering at Faithful Word Baptist Church years and years ago and preaching and preaching at nursing homes and doing different things and leading soul winning times and doing all these different things and stepping in, filling the pulpit, I was not ready nor authorized to pastor a church until I had the laying on of hands. And I'll tell you what, I, like I said, I, it's hard to describe or hard to explain, but I was not ready prior to the ordination to be ready to be able to preach three sermons a week and run everything within a church. I was not ready to do that. But God gave me what I needed to do after that ordination. And with the laying out of hands, that came. Amen. And like I said, it's hard to explain. It's hard to express. <clears throat> but I have to give 
God the glory for, for helping me to be able to do the job that I was commissioned to do. But if you're going to do things right, if you're going to follow the word of, by, uh, word of God, you, you have to do it. And we see the way things are done. We see that, that even to, in, the, in the epistle to Titus, right? Therefore, left I thee in Crete. Because why? There were some things that were lacking. And then he ordained elders in every church. The church without an elder, it doesn't mean it's not a church. It's a church. People are gathering together. You know, you're meeting together. But... There's still something lacking. They need they needed leadership, but and but they needed the right leadership, and they needed the leadership to be ordained. Right. Yeah. They needed to have someone to lay hands on them and ordain them to be able to receive that extra gift and the extra spirit that God is going to have to give you to get the job done. Because it's a hard job. Because it's yeah. not easy. Because you need God's help to to lead a church to lead a spiritual battle, to lead a spiritual mission of preaching the gospel to people. This isn't just a job. Oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I pass our church. Like, yeah, it's work, but it's, it's not, not like a secular job. Because if you treat it as a secular job, it's going to be. And there's plenty of those bozos out there. Too many of them. Given, they're giving church a bad name. They're getting people to, to be to despise church in general. I deal I'm dealing with this already with family members that just despise churches in general because they see the phoniness, they see the hypocrisy, they see people who don't really care about, they see people who are just getting a paycheck, it's a cush job, whatever. That's not how God wants things run. That's right. Yeah. And if you're gonna continue to have faithfulness and integrity towards the word of God then you need to be meditating on these things. Like I said, in verse 15 here, in verse 74, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to that thy profiting may appear to all. Heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He's not talking about saving himself like his soul going to hell. <laughs> He's already been saved, okay? There's a lot that we could be saved from, though. Saved from hardship, saved from from pitfalls, and, and all kinds of all kinds of things. We have a good doctrine; God will direct you away from those things. So, um, but hey, when you when you are sincerely looking to the Word of God, seeking God's approval, trying to do everything you can to do it right according to Scripture, God will guide you. God will be with you. You got a great thing going here. And I hope and I pray that God will bless this church and this group of people and, and that so many more good things will come out of this church. And, and I'm excited. I hope I get an opportunity to come back again in the future and just see how things are going here because it really does, you know, I, I can just feel the spirit here. Even though, like I said, I don't, I don't really know you all that well. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here, but this is, man, I am excited. And if you are someone that lives anywhere close to you, because I don't know who's here and who's not, try to help this church out and come as often as you can and, and, and promote the zeal. Get behind Brother Weeb, who's going to be taking over the reins as he's ordained this weekend and, and, and serve, serve him like you'd serve the Lord. Amen. Spot rides have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, would you please help Brother Weeb to be strong and courageous. And I pray that you please help this church to be strong and courageous, Lord, and that you would bless them and, and help them and, and guide and teach them, dear Lord, and just help them to reach this whole area with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that you would please uh, keep them all safe from evil and that you would um, just pour out your blessing upon them here for their faithfulness to your word. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.